Welcome back to Designing New Algorithms with Qiskit. This is episode two, where we are exploring a second application of sample-based quantum diagonalization, or SQD. Previously, we learned that SQD is a technique to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors of quantum Hamiltonians, and we saw how it can be used for chemistry applications. In this video, we'll see how SQD can be applied to physics Hamiltonians, how it's been experimentally demonstrated on problems larger than what's possible to solve with exact classical diagonalization methods, and learn what makes us all different from the chemistry Hamiltonians we considered before. Make sure to stick around for the second half of this video where Bryce will show us a coding demonstration of how to use SQD in practice to study a type of lattice model that is important in condensed matter physics called the Anderson Impurity Model. We're gonna dive right into things, so if you need a refresher on all the details of SQD, go have a look back at episode one. In that episode, we saw that using SQD involves first preparing a quantum circuit on a quantum device and sampling from it, and then classically processing those noisy samples. We focus specifically on chemistry Hamiltonians, which can have a very large number of terms in practice, sometimes in the millions or more. We also pointed out that variational circuits are used for these kinds of Hamiltonians so that we can prepare them efficiently on hardware without our circuit depth growing too large. But because these circuits are heuristic, we don't have any mathematical guarantees that processing samples from those circuits with SQD will efficiently converge to the ground state. Is it possible to get around that lack of convergence guarantee? The answer is yes. We can consider a different type of circuit that represents the time evolution of our Hamiltonian. This type of circuit is typically prepared on a quantum computer using a Trotter decomposition. What we do next is to prepare a set of these circuits over increasing time intervals or increasing number of Trotter steps. And then we sample from them. It turns out we can prove under certain assumptions that SQD will converge efficiently when processing samples from these kinds of circuits. Although these circuits are usually far too deep to prepare on today's quantum computers for chemistry Hamiltonians, they are well suited for physics Hamiltonians describing lattice models. That's because these Hamiltonians have relatively fewer terms and are more geometrically local so it becomes possible to prepare trotterized circuits for non-trivial instances of these systems. Just as we pointed out in episode one for chemistry applications, SQD can be used for physics Hamiltonians describing lattice models at scales that are beyond what's possible to do with exact classical methods or with VQE today. And in fact, there have been recent experimental demonstrations on lattice models using circuits with 85 qubits and over 6,000 two-qubit gates. If you'd like to read more about that demonstration, check out the link below. Let's now go to Bryce to walk us through a code example of how to use SQD in practice to calculate the ground state energy of a lattice model on 40 qubits. Okay, let's walk through a hands-on code demo of how to use the open source SQD Qiskit add-on to approximate the ground state energy of a lattice model called the Single Impurity Anderson Model. This model can be used to describe magnetic impurities embedded in metals. And while we won't get into the details of this model, we'll link to some resources in the video description if you'd like to learn more. Again, we'll follow the steps of the Qiskit pattern. For step one, we'll map the description of the lattice model to a set of trotterized time evolution circuits. These circuits prepare what are called a Krylov basis. In step two, we'll transpile those circuits to run on a specific quantum processor. In step three, We'll execute those circuits with a sampler primitive to get some noisy bit strings. And finally, in step four, we'll use the SQD Qiskit add-on to post-process all of those noisy samples and estimate the ground state energy of this lattice model. So let's get into it. All right, so for step one, we're gonna take the description of our impurity model and we're gonna map that to a set of quantum circuits. In this case, we're gonna use this script so that we can prepare these Krylov basis states. Under the hood, what it's doing is it's constructing the Hamiltonian for our impurity model. It's gonna rotate that Hamiltonian into the momentum basis and use that description to prepare a series of time evolution circuits. These are gonna be what prepare our Krylov basis states. 
We can print out one of these to see what it looks like. Each of them is of a different length, and this one is somewhere in the middle. Next, we want to take the circuits that we just generated and transpile them to run on a real quantum processor. In this case, I picked IBM Pittsburgh as the device we want to run on. The Generate Preset Pass Manager function from Qiskit will take the circuits that we just made, it will lay them out onto the device qubits. By setting to optimization level 3, it will pick the device qubits that have the lowest error rates on that day. Additionally, it's going to take the operations we saw in the previous circuit and convert them into the native basis gate set of the device. After transpilation, our circuits look something like this. Next, we want to take these transpiled circuits and run them using the Qiskit primitives. I'll use the Qiskit sampler like we did in the last video. In that video, we only had one circuit and we set 100,000 shots to be taken. In this case, we're passing in a list of circuits, so here we'll only set 500 shots, but that'll be 500 for each circuit in the list. After we get back the results, we need to concatenate all of the bit strings we obtained from each of the circuits into one big list so that it can be passed on to the SQD add-on like Jen mentioned earlier. We can use this function to get an idea of what the bit strings we saw looked like. In this case, I'm showing 20. Finally, we want to take the noisy samples that we obtained from the quantum processor and use the SQD Qiskit add-on to post-process them. This block of code looks very similar to what we saw in the last video. We have a callback function, which is going to be used to save data during the outer loop of optimization for SQD. This will let us visualize how well our problem is converging as we continue to optimize. Again, we're going to use this diagonalized fermionic Hamiltonian function. We have some parameters we're passing in that specify details about the system we're trying to diagonalize. And we have some other parameters that specify how we want this outer loop of optimization to run. These are things like how many cycles should we do at most of this outer optimization, and how many bit strings should be sampled within the inner loop each time we do diagonalization. With these parameters, we can see that this SQD converges after 20 iterations. Now we can take the results that we saved with the callback function, and we can plot them. We see that within two iterations, the energy drops dramatically, and as we keep optimizing, we get better and better estimates. In this case, the dashed line corresponds to the energy obtained with DMRG, which is a state-of-the-art tensor network method. If we continue to optimize this further, we'll get closer and closer to this state-of-the-art value. And that's all there is to it. We've included several links in the description below, so you can access the full version of this demo, dive into the research behind the SQD technique, and learn more about Qiskit add-ons. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the next video in the series, where we'll see how to apply approximate quantum compilation with tensor networks to build more efficient circuits for time evolution problems. Cheers!